All right. Hi, everyone. I am here with Nancy. Nancy um, is an incredible light worker herself, just a powerhouse of a woman. And she's been working with us for a bit of time now. But, you know, the food struggle for Nancy, whether it was weight, overeating, binge eating, health complications, whatever that might be, has been going on, you know, kind of since the late 80s. So Nancy has a really interesting journey because she's done so much inner work and so much healing herself. And she came a really far way by the time she got to us. But there were just a few pieces of the puzzle that I feel like we got to really work together on and yes. kind of make stick for you, Nancy. Um, and I feel like you've just grown so much in a short span of time. So my first question for you, one, thank you for being here with us. I think everyone's going to learn a lot from you. And my first question would be, you know, what did life and your relationship with food look like um, before reaching out to us and kind of paint that picture for us before we go into where you are now? Well, in the late 80s, I went through a very, very stressful period of time in my life. It felt like everything I counted on was falling apart. And I turned to binge eating for comfort and gained about 100 pounds in nine months. It was very radical and it's like I didn't even know who I was anymore. And since that time, I've tried different diets, I've tried different approaches, and sometimes would lose up to 30 or 40 pounds and then gain it back. And mm. it was a roller coaster. But in the meantime, I was also doing a lot of inner work. So I, I learned through other sources to be much kinder to myself and not judge myself and not judge my body uh, or my process. And I just kept, you know, I just kept looking for um, help that did not require sticking to a diet because I, I knew enough to know that for me that always triggered overeating. Got it. Got it. Yes. And then you and I connected and, yes. um, and it was, it almost just seems like it was meant to be. We connected through some of your work and then you saw yes. what we did and it was just this synergistic um, combo. So, okay. So, you know, to, to overview, you had some really, really difficult struggles with binge eating and weight. And then over time, you've done all this beautiful inner healing, but there was still kind of the up and down on track, off track with the weight and food relationship, even though you came a far way. And so you wanted to make changes for your health, but it was like, how do I do this in a way that doesn't involve dieting, but also doesn't lead to weight gain and health complications right. and all of those things. So, okay, fast forward a little bit, then you come into our world, we have a call, um, you start going through our program and you are, I know you're a few months into our work together. Have you gone through the whole program yet? Or are you, where, where are you week wise? I have two modules left to listen. Okay. To. Got it. Got it. So you've been in our world longer than six weeks, but you've spent about, yes. you've gone through six weeks, so to speak, six modules of our beating binge eating blueprint program. And just in that short, you know, I would say two to three months span of time, where, where do you feel like you are now? Like, what do you feel like shifted for you? Well, in anticipation of this call, I thought of three turning points for me. Key, oh, I love that. <laughs> key points that really have made a difference for me. The first one was on our personal call that we had. You, I mentioned that I tend to negotiate with the part of me that is compulsive about, I want more sugar, I want a dessert, I want to eat more when I'm not hungry. And you made the comment, don't negotiate with that part of your brain. You know, it's part of, that's a habit part of my brain. And it, I need to not negotiate with it because the object is to change the habit, not to give in to that part of my brain that's just used to turning to food for comfort or when I'm tired or for whatever reason. That was the first big thing. And then in the process of the program, I chose a mantra that was just life-changing for me. I am trusting my body. And my body has pretty consistently, I've thought of it as the enemy. You know? I, I wasn't judging it anymore or being angry with myself over my weight or my eating, but it seemed like I was in an adversarial position with my body. And um, 
when I started saying I am trusting my body, it opened up a whole new relationship between me, the real me, and my body. And then when I posted that on the Facebook page, someone suggested that I add the piece and my body is trusting me. And when I first heard that, I thought, oh no, don't trust me, I'm not trustworthy with food. And um, so for about a week, that thought kind of scared me. Like, I don't want my body or anyone else trusting me as far as how I eat. But the second week, I began to feel a tenderness toward my body who is trusting me to take care of it. And it, also, it kind of has evolved into a nurturing relationship uh, so that I'm trusting my body to give me hunger and full cues that tell me uh, what my body is hungry to eat at any given time. But now my body is also trusting me to make wise cho food choices. And that was pivotal because of a few weeks after the second part of that mantra was added, I found out I'm diabetic. And so I was having to make huge food changes. Well, not huge because I've always eaten relatively healthy food, but I needed to be more careful about my carb intake and sugar intake. And um, that, that new nurturing relationship where I think of my body as trusting me to take care of it has made the transition into the food changes I've had to make so much easier. Just in incredibly, I, I was, I've been surprised how easy it's been. And then the third thing that has uh, been a big impact for me is in the past, when I have lost weight, I, um, it kind of triggers a reaction, which I call self-sabotage. And on a, food, on a call, we changed it to just inner resistance to change. And uh, it's part of that training the brain in a new habit pattern thing, and my brain resists change. So we talked about needing to choose a new identity because my old identity was of a aging, overweight woman who could not manage food choices. And my new identity is that I'm a woman who cares very much about her health and is, is uh, making choices to support her health as I age. And um, by choosing that new identity, then I've lost some weight after making choices that are better for me as a diabetic, but I'm not feeling that inner resistance because I'm more in alignment with the new identity. So that, you know, those are the three things that so far have really had a major impact on my journey. Yes, I love those. And can you hear me okay? Because on top yes. of all the tech changes, my headphones died <laughs> while, we, while you were saying those beautiful things that you were saying. Um, but I love that, Nancy. That's beautiful. Like the new identity. I, I love that that was such a big shift for you. And I think for so many of us that have struggled, especially if you've struggled for a long time and you've tried a bunch of things and you feel like you're kind of failing or starting over or whatever that is, there can be these like deeply ingrained identities around our struggle right. and feeling like we're always going to have to heal or always struggle. And that's a huge part of the healing process is shifting that. Um, and then I love the reframe around self-sabotage. It's not that there's anything wrong with you that you're just sabotaging yourself, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's just that you've been operating in a certain way for a while and you're layering in these new changes over time. And then another big takeaway that I would love to really highlight because I feel like when people see our stuff online, we're always talking about not dieting, not restricting, and that can create a lot of fear, specifically for someone who doesn't want to gain weight or who's diabetic, right? They're like, well, I have to monitor my carbs, you know, or someone who has celiac or gluten intolerance. There's this, well, I have medical reasons why I have to adjust my diet a certain way. So how do we balance both of those? And I think you're a really beautiful testament of that to where you can 
let go of the restrictive mindset that causes binge eating, but simultaneously make really nourishing, supportive choices for your, your health. And so I, I love that you've been able to do that. I think that's going to be an inspiration to a lot of women. Well, thank you. I've, uh, I've done a lot of research finding new recipes and new, uh, new ways to treat myself that are not loaded with sugar and uh, you know, that feel like a treat to me. So it's, it's um, also meant really pursuing um, information that will fill my need to be treated as, you know, special or getting a special treat now and then without uh, causing my blood sugar to spike. So Got I'm- it very happy with what I've learned and I anticipate that there's no doubt more to learn. <laughs> hey, it's always a journey, but no, I love that. And I love, I love how, you know, we were able to, my cat just jumped up and joined us. <laughs> I love how we were able to, you know, a Look lot of this. The, oh, yay. I have a same little pad for my, my little, little child. I have two little Maltese sitting up on the desk with me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you see her little bed right there. <laughs> uh -huh. She uh, sits with me all the time. Um, so yeah, Nancy, this is, is really amazing. So I'd be curious, you know, I know you have a lot of experience in the field of all things growth, psychology, development, books, studies, like I feel like, oh, excuse you. I feel like you're a, um, a master in the area. And so what would you feel like was one of the big differences or takeaways that, I know you mentioned those three takeaways, but kind of a difference of working with us compared to some of the other work. Like, what do you think was that thing that made it really like land and shift for you? Well, I am, I practice as a relationship coach. I teach couples how to talk without fighting, which means that they have to change the way they speak to each other and how they listen to each other and when they first try to do this, it feels very awkward and mechanical, but eventually if they keep it up, it becomes a new life skill. It becomes very natural. So I understood about practice um, changing a bad habit for a good habit and what it takes for the brain to get used to a new habit. I understood that part very well from my own work. But when you correlated that concept to changing my habitual way of looking at food and thinking that, you know, food somehow was the enemy and um, it, it, it just clicked for me that I've been teaching couples that same concept for 25 years. I just hadn't applied it to this arena of my life because I was so locked in to our cultural way of looking at dieting and looking at food consumption and looking at weight loss and weight gain. And uh, I knew for two years, I've been looking for you, Brittany. Uh. <laughs> I had to be a way, there had to be a way to address the issue without dieting, without counting carbs, without counting calories, but addressing <clears throat> addressing the need for a, a new pattern in my life. And I just needed, I needed some guidance to know how to go about that in my own struggles with food uh, to take the struggle out of it. Yeah. Basically. And that's what you've done for me is the concepts have taken the struggle out. Oh, I love that. I love that. That makes me so happy, Nancy. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you because I feel like um, your aha moments, like when you have them, I'm like, ooh, this is gonna, this is gonna make a difference for her. And that always makes me really excited. And it's, it's been amazing yes. to see you grow. You're such a light in the group. So awesome. Well, thank you for doing this. You know, and if anyone, like if your struggle relates to, and you're watching this, right? If, if your struggle relates to Nancy's in any way, we'll um, Nancy has mentioned a call with me a few times, so we'll drop a link for that someplace around here. Um, but before we wrap up, Nancy, any last like words of wisdom, anything that's on your heart, any, any, anything before we go? <laughs> yes, uh, thank you for giving me that opportunity. I think the most important thing I learned, I actually learned before meeting you, and that was to stop beating myself up. Mm. And that 
judging myself or beating myself up doesn't ever turn into a good behavior change. It somehow nails me to the spot that I don't want to be. So my encouragement to all of your students or your followers is to, first of all, let go of the practice of beating yourself up or thinking erroneously that somehow if you beat yourself up, it'll help you improve. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It just keeps you stuck in that spot. It's like nailing your feet to the floor. You can't move when you're judging yourself. Totally. Or wrong or whatever. Yeah, I love that. I think that's so important. And I think, you know, a lot of times when we're in that self judgment and blame, and then you add a layer of fear in, like fear of gaining weight, fear of diabetes, fear of a health flare up or whatever it is, it's so easy to just, okay, I just have to go back to that control. I have to go right. back to that dieting. I have to right. go back to that thing that I've known so well for five, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you know? Um, and so having that encouragement to, you know, be soft on yourself, be gentle on yourself, but still take those little baby steps out of your comfort zone <laughs> um, mm -hmm. that get you out of that control. Because I think when you get in that that self-deprecating and that self-criticism it's so it's so easy to be operating from that low energy place in a in a place of fear and when we're in yeah. fear we typically go back to our safety which is what we've been doing for 30 years right versus yeah. what you know that that next step that's going to really shift this so i think you've done a beautiful job of even in the place of fear um or even in the place of confusion and unknown with your health conditions and so forth you know following the guidance but also really following the guidance to build that sense of inner trust. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of our work, of course, we are leading the path, but it does, a, a big part of it is a lot of us inside know some of those things that are going to be supportive for us, but it's building that inner trust muscle, like you mentioned with your first point so beautifully. So, so much to learn from this interview, Nancy. Thank you so much. I was excited when I saw your name on the schedule today. I'm like, yes, it's going to be, <laughs> it, it should be a good one because you're filled with so much wisdom. So I just really appreciate you um, taking the time, dealing with the tech issues and the scheduling issues and all the things and uh, jumping on today. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Well, I'll just close with saying the advantage of struggling with this for 40 years is I've, I've found out everything that doesn't work. You know? Very true, right? <laughs> and I just finally let go of doing the same thing over and over again that never worked before. I just let that go and thought there has to be a way that works and I'm going to find it. So bless you for contacting me and I, I tracked your email address back to your website and <laughs> I thought, oh, this is what I've been looking for. Yes, yes, I love it. Definitely meant to be. And shout out to you and your work too. The call that we had for your work was was super helpful as well. So awesome, Nancy. Well, this was amazing. I can't wait to see you on a call. It was good to see you face to face. And thanks for doing this. Thank you.